Brazil, a country of contrast. It's got riches, but it's got poverty. It's got serenity, but it's got violence. We're going to find all about Brazil from Pedro Acosta, the honorary consul of Brazil. What does the Brazilian consulate do? Well, we, are, we have an honorary consulate in Seattle. Uh, in the last uh, 10 years, Brazil has done a wonderful job of internationalizing the, uh, to, have to get the, the, the country to be more international. We create a lot of embassies all over the world. And here in Seattle, we, d we just have 5,000 Brazilians here. So uh, we don't have enough population to have uh, a consulate, an official consulate. So they chose me as the honorary consul to represent Brazil in the area. When you say represent Brazil, what do you do? Besides I come on and tell us and check. I represent my country. I bring information. I, I serve as a liaison between uh, the Washington State and Brazil. Mm -hmm. You know, and I got to ask this, it's a real basic question, but uh, I, I guess I should ask of Brazil, why you? So I have a company in Brazil, a PR company. I came to, to Seattle, Washington. My wife is from here. And I started to, to bring a lot of missions from Brazil and a lot of missions from here to Brazil as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I start to, to be in the, the center middleman between Brazil and Washington State. And after that, the, the, the president of Brazil uh, and uh, the Ministry of Foreign Office, uh, the Foreign Office in Brazil, they chose me as the honorary consul here. So if, if I wanted to go to Brazil for not just business but for, for travel, would I come to you or would I just go to my travel agent? You, if you, if you are a businessman or if you, are, um, if you want to have an extended visit to Brazil, you should talk to me. And because the consulate here doesn't expedite visas, you have to send to San Francisco. Mm. So sometimes I help Microsoft and uh, Amazon, these kind of companies to, to go to Brazil expediting visas. Mm. But basically I, I'm a hub of Brazilian information here in the area. We have the, consul, the honorary consulate, we have the, the Center for Brazilian Studies at the University of Washington. We have a Brazil club at the University of Washington. And the population here is about 4,000, 4,500 uh, Brazilians in the area, especially in the east side. They work for Microsoft, for Boeing. They are very high level, very skilled people, Brazilians here in Seattle. And Brazil, uh, Brazil is the bee of brick. The best of the bricks. Uh, the yeah. best of the bricks. So it is a, it's a growing economy. It's a growing country. It's not a developing country anymore, is it? Well, in, in, some, uh, in some areas, you, you are, we are a very poor country. In some areas, we, we are a very rich country. That's why foundations like Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they want to go to Brazil because you, ha you have areas with high technology mm -hmm. and a lot of poverty, and they can put this together and test vaccines or some trials about the new medicine, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Brazil is, you're right, is a, is a big contrast. We have an uh, airplane industry over there in Braer. They compete with all the major companies in the world. And we have this part of uh, the country is kind of poor and they need a lot of education, this kind of mm -hmm. thing. The recent presidential election in Brazil was pretty exciting. Yes, yes. Tell us about that. Well, we had uh, Dilma Rousseff, the incumbent, and she belongs to the, the PT. PT is the Workers' Party in Brazil. And we have the other candidate, Aécio Neves, from PSDB. It's kind of a uh, business-oriented candidate. Mm -hmm. So the country is like the United States now. They are pretty, we are pretty divided between uh, paying this social bill, helping uh, the uh, people to get out of the poverty, and uh, nurture the business in Brazil. So it's a duality. We have the same duality of uh, Republicans and Democrats here. The country is fighting a lot now. Oh, well, I, I, <laughs> I'm not going to say congratulations on that one. There's an article in, in Bloomberg just a very short time ago. It was called, The Election is Over, So the Battle for Brazil Rages. And a really interesting quote out of this Bloomberg article. It says, Brazil's problem isn't ideological gridlock. Rare is the hard line that can withstand the crucible of Congress now with 28 parties, wow, where allegiances shift as opportunities arise. The real challenge is hewing progress from the muddle. Is, is that right? Is, is it yes. just hard to get progress because you've got so many parties? 
Well, we have so many parties because we need uh, the president need the support of the politicians, the Congress to to govern in Brazil. It almost is the same problem here. Here we just ha have two or three or four yeah. uh, parties in the Congress, but Brazil has to accommodate a lot of uh, uh, a lot of people in the same Congress. So we have right people, agribusiness people. You have uh, startup people everybody in the Congress. And we have 35 secretaries today, ministries, uh, as you say. Oh, really? Yeah. It's hard to govern Brazil. Brazil is, is, is uh, for professionals in terms of uh, management the country. No? Hmm. For professionals, huh? Well, interesting. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the contrast. Uh, some of the beauty, what would you say are the, the most beautiful places in Brazil? If anybody were to go there, what would be the shot? Rio de Janeiro is the best, but uh, I'm convincing people to go to the interior of Brazil. We have the Amazon, as you know, we have uh, several areas, pristine areas in Brazil. Brazil is, is a huge country in terms of tourism, ecotourism. You, uh, Brazil has more water than the whole Asia. So we have really? a lot of rivers over there, mm -hmm. um, uh, wonderful uh, uh, beaches, and, uh, but more than that, to go to Brazil, you have to pass by Rio de Janeiro, because Rio de Janeiro is all international cities, like New York. Sao Paulo is a 25 million people city. 25 million 25 people? 25 million, the, the metropolitan So Rio area. is not the biggest city then? No, 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 Brazil. no. Rio is for pleasure, for oil, the oil industries over there, and the movie industries over there. So but Sao Paulo is the big center of the business in Brazil. Well, I mean, everybody knows Brazil for Carnival. So that, that it's, it's time to go to Carnival, but there's also in, incredible slums there too. Yes, we have in, in Rio de Janeiro, we have the largest slum in the world is Rocinha. It's half a million uh, people live in the, in, fr in, in the hill in front of the ocean. It's a magnificent uh, 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 landscape. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, in these favelas, they call favelas, they mm -hmm. have everything nowadays. They have banks, they have uh, all, all services inside of the favelas. Oh, and the yeah. slums. Yeah. So it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's all about money. It's about, the, you have a, the, the right location in front of the ocean for a cheap price sometimes. But we, you know, in favelas, they have a lot of uh, violence still. Yeah. They have a, a program in Rio de Janeiro now, it's pacification of the favelas. They send a lot of uh, cops over there and they, they become part of the life of the favela. Mm. Interesting because there's also is a, is a claim of extreme police brutality. Yes. And in, in fact there's an article out of Time magazine just from November the 10th, 2014 and here's a, a statement from Elena Pereira, who was a, a state ombudsman for public security, a state ombudsman, and a human rights activist said that revenge killings that took place in Belém would be nothing out of the ordinary for police-linked militias. Um, this is not the first case. There have been other massacres, she said, citing the case of a former military police officer who was sentenced to 120 years in prison in October for killing six teenagers in 2011. That, that is not a pretty picture. No, it's not, a, uh, it's not good, and, but Brazil is doing a wonderful job taking people from the poverty and becoming middle class. They really? call it class C in Brazil. In Brazil it's a very classy society. They call, class C is people who used to be in favelas and uh, in very poor places, especially in the northeast of Brazil. And then the government gives them a monthly stipend, $200 for each kid in school. And then the, the, this uh, kind of program brought people from the, the, the poverty, 40 or 50 million people in Brazil. So in Brazil now we have a 200 million country with just 10 million in poverty. It's a miracle. In China they did the same thing, but in China was 500 million left the poverty and become middle class. Mm. Speaking of China, um, if you talk with anyone from just about any country, you know that China is coming to your country and looking for resources to buy. Uh, and buy is the right word. Is China coming to Brazil? A lot. But China is the, the, the biggest part of, commercial partner of Brazil today. They buy everything in Brazil from uh, soybeans and uh, iron, everything. Mm. And now China is not doing very well. Brazil is not doing very well because China. Oh, really? Yeah. We used to be very dependent on the United States. Now you are very dependent in terms of exports 
from China. But we have a wonderful relationship with all the countries in the world. Brazil is, the, is a, recognized by being a country that have just friends. We don't have enemies. Mm. We talk to Iran, we talk to Venezuela, we talk to Cuba, we talk to the United States, we talk to all the European countries. We just, we don't believe in wars, we, we, we believe in dialogue. But you do have a military though. We do have, yeah. I, th I think it's about 300,000 people in Brazil. But, and uh, we have a lot of, uh, the Air Force is, is gaining some power now because Brazil is a vast territory, the same size of the United States, the continental United States. So you have to, just buy airplanes, you can cover the country, especially Amazon to reduce the deforestation. Mm -hmm. Brazil is, has hosted two recent huge events. One well, of them, well, they're, uh, in, 2016, I'm, I'm, in 2016 is going to be the Olympics, yeah. Yeah, well, I was talking about the Rio 20 uh, ah, yeah, in 2012, yeah. and then, of course, but let's first talk about the World Cup. Mm. That was a big deal. Sorry about that. 7 1 in the last. <laughs> of, <laughs> it was terrible for Brazil. But uh, we did a very good job hosting a lot of countries in Brazil, and we have a big problem now. A lot of people that went to Brazil to watch the World Cup mm -hmm. stayed there. So, so we, what are you going to do with them? You going to kick them out? <laughs> I don't know what we don't know what to do because they go to Brazil, they fell in love with some person over there, and they stay there forever. So uh, that is a, a material at the, a piece at the New York Times another mm -hmm. day, talking about that the foreigners that went to Brazil and they stayed there. They, they don't want to come back to the United States or the other countries. Well, let's, let's say that I wanted to do business in Brazil. How would I go about doing that? So, you, you, we have a very Americanized society in Brazil. We are in the same stage of doing business. We have very international companies in Brazil. So, it's kind of easier now to do business in Brazil. We, in the United States, we have uh, Heinz, uh, House Bush, we have um, uh, Burger King, we have uh, Swift, we have a lot of companies here. So Brazil, the economy is growing and they are internationalizing the, comp the, the, the companies over there and they have a lot of assets all over the world nowadays. So you mentioned Burger King, does that mean that you have fast food outlets all over the place? <laughs> well, when I say Brazil bought the, the Burger King, they say, oh, you can take it. But uh, <laughs> Brazil is a very Americanized country in terms of uh, the um, Brazilian people want to be like the Americans and the vice versa sometimes because when Americans go to Brazil they want to have this kind of relax and more uh, uh, relationship approach in their business. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very interesting mix of American and Brazilian culture of doing business. Mm -hmm. Now, the Rio 20 conference uh, in 2012 was probably the biggest environmentally focused conference ever in the history of the yeah. world. Uh, why Rio? Everybody wants to go to Rio. Yeah? If you've, uh, you are Seattle or uh, wonderful cities, Rio mm -hmm. is, uh, is, is in the, everybody wants to go there. They have an image of Rio, of relaxation, uh, wonderful people, beaches, this kind of thing. It's a really good city to do business as well because mm -hmm. you can have the pleasure of the people over there, pleasure of uh, this relationship, the, the environment, and do business as well. Well, the government itself, is, is it outwardly looking to, in, uh, to increase uh, relations? And so by hosting a, a, an international event like the Rio 20 conference and then the World Cup and then the Olympics coming up, um, is it purposely trying to get on the world stage? Well, it's a big co country. We have six, um, we're the sixth economy in the world nowadays, but we don't have a strong army and we don't want wars. So our way, uh, our, our way of being in the, in the stage, and uh, the world stage is doing good things for the world. We are in Haiti, Haiti? Yeah. yeah. We are in the several places in Africa to help uh, the Ebola, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, our army nowadays, in, in terms of internationalization, is very, is helping people, not making wars. What's the average income? Well, the, the minimum salary in Brazil is a big thing over there, is about um, $300 a month. Here in the United States, we talk a lot about a living wage uh, or a, a family wage job. What's a family wage job pay in Brazil? It's about uh, 
1,000, 2,000 dollars. A month? The whole family, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is not the average, but the, the, I, I'm talking about the class C. The class C. Yeah, but the CEOs in Brazil and the business people in Brazil make much more money. The, the, the disparity of uh, the salaries are huge in Brazil. That's a big problem. We're trying to create a, a strong middle class uh, with we have to avoid this kind of disparity. Yeah, I've, it, it's been my experience just from looking around the world is that people who have power don't easily give it up. Uh, so yeah. income disparity is, uh, you know, it usually means that people at the top are going to have to give up more. Are they willingly doing that in Brazil? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a, a, a very interesting thing that happening happen in Brazil now is uh, people from the uh, C class they make a lot of money together. That the sustainability of the country nowadays. In Brazil, we have the same phenomenon of the United States. All the jobs are in the lower uh, jobs, like McDonald's, this kind of thing. Mm. For the middle class, uh, for upper middle class, it's hard to uh, life in Brazil nowadays. Mm -hmm. Is we that because of, of what happened with the financial services crisis of 2008? Yeah, and I think so, continue? because the uh, United States have the same thing. People uh, in the, the top levels don't have jobs anymore. And uh, just in the very low levels, that's the, I, I've heard about that in Brazil, in the United States, the same phenomenon is in Brazil. Mm. We have an aging population in the United States and in fact around the world. Uh, I think in the year 2050, China is due to be the oldest country uh, on the planet in terms of its population. Um, but with age comes responsibility, typically coming from the government and from those who are working. Uh, which, if that's a shrinking population, then you've got an issue, and that's what people fear here in the United States. Do, do you have that set, those same fears same in Brazil? Thing. How are you going to deal with that? Well, it's a big problem. They try to low the, to expand the uh, the the age for retirement in Brazil, when we instead of 62 to 65, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But Brazil it has very had used to have very good laws to protect uh, the labor so we have a gigantic bill now to pay for the the people who are after 50 60. a lot of people in brazil used to retire at 50 years old so it's a big problem the government is trying to manage that because the big bill in brazil nowadays is to protect this aging population but Brazil is very young. Brazil is kind of China, I think. Uh, with in this population of 200 million people, 80 million are students. 80 really? Million, almost half of the, of the country. I'm going to talk about education in Brazil. It's, uh, it's marvelous how you, in Brazil now is putting a lot of money and effort in education to catch up with other countries like Korea and uh, Japan and Russia, this kind of thing. All right, so let's say that you have 80 million newly well-educated young adults. Where are they going to work? Well, well Brazil, uh, the private sector and the government are working together to nurture startups. So we bring people to the United States, for, for instance, we nowadays we have 100,000 students from Brazil in the United States, England, and other countries just to have uh, graduation, not undergraduation. So Brazil is paying everything, including the monthly stipend for these people to, to study here. Mm -hmm. At the University of Washington, we have uh, more than 100 Brazilians over there. Mm -hmm. And they Being are- Being paid for by the Brazilian government. By, by us, by the taxpayer in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of great programs, but I'm also hearing a lot of expense. What's the taxes there? Tell well, me about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the corporate tax is about 35%, like yeah. here. Uh -huh. uh, in uh, the same, uh, the, in the, uh, for uh, people. But uh, the problem in Brazil, we have a lot of uh, hidden taxes. Uh, Brazil, if, if, uh, the car over there, I was uh, reading about cars. Brazil has a 20 or 25% tax on cars. United States is just 5%. Mm. So for, for us, doing business in, Bra in the United States is fantastic. It's like a part of it's the Dis Disney world for us because you have lower taxes here than Brazil. Uh, um, Brazil is known in some ways for its, its agribusiness. Yeah, um, we are a huge uh, powerhouse. Of, we are the farm of the, the, the world, they say. 
Well, um, let's talk about that because one of the things I think the agribusiness has really excelled in in Brazil is uh, biodiesel fuels. Yeah. Uh, how, do, how have you done that? What do you do different than we do here in the United States? Good question. In the, after the dictatorship in Brazil in the 70s, we have this big oil crisis. You remember this 1973? I actually do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Brazil started to do a, a wonderful program of uh, replacing gas by ethanol. So Brazil is a continental country. We have thousands of uh, gas stations in Brazil. In every gas station in Brazil, you can buy ethanol, gas, and uh, natural gas as well. We ha we, you have three or four options for your car. And all, all the cars in Brazil are flexible, flexible, flex, uh, flex cars, yeah, flex, flex cars. Group. Yeah. So it's a it's a wonderful thing. Sometimes when the gas is too high, they put ethanol, and the opposite is true as well. Yeah. Nowadays, ethanol is is is, is not cheaper uh, comparing to gas. So everybody's putting gas in Brazil now. But you have a big oil industry there, though, right? We do. Yeah. Uh, we just found uh, a gigantic reserve. In this, uh, under the seabed, and uh, this oil is going to change the result. Uh, the money with this oil is going to change the reality in Brazil. We have all the money from this oil are going to is going to be put in education in Brazil. Hmm. You know, some people would say that for for countries and new wealth from oil, that it's it's like a drug. It you, is. Yeah. You get hooked on it, and bad things happen. Yeah, like yeah. Venezuela and other countries. Yeah. Yeah, we are aware of this, but Brazil is a very uh, diverse economy. We have airplanes, we have cars, all the, all the international car industries are there. We have a huge bank sector, banking sector as well. Everything is electronic because the, the time of the inflation a long time ago, they had to be very quick mm -hmm. in the pr processing uh, all the accounts. And uh, services is gigantic in Brazil. Brazil is, the, is, is, is bigger than California nowadays. We have $2.3 trillion economy. It's huge. Mm. So what we need now is management. We need to, the help of the Americans to improve our management skills in Brazil. Hmm. So how receptive will uh, Brazilian businesses be to Americans coming down there and telling them what to do? We just love it. Well, <laughs> all the, uh, take the uh, Seattle, for instance. We have all the big companies here there. Starbucks is doing a lot of money. It's making a lot of money over there. Uh, Microsoft, all the big companies here in Seattle and in Brazil, and they are really happy with that. I was talking to Alan Mulally, the ex-CEO uh, of uh, Ford, and we love Brazil. That's the, the, our paradise, because you can do business over there, you can make money. It's very Americanized way of doing business over there. We have all the conditions to, to grow now. Mm. You know, I, I know it's your job to, to make Brazil sound great, but you also no, were... I'm were, talking, it's true. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, but but you, were, you were willing to talk with us, though, about uh, some of the difficult things, some of the yeah. police brutality, some of the uh, election difficulties, and the, and the poverty. What's the bad part about Brazil? What's the part that if you could change, you would? I would say uh, management. I think uh, we have all the resources, we have money, we have people, wonderful people in Brazil, but we don't have this kind of uh, management skill that uh, can help all the sectors in the country. For instance, violence. We have put a lot of money on cops, on police, and this kind of thing. And uh, even so, we have this kind of problem in Brazil, because it's, it's all about management. Hmm. If, if, uh, what I would change in Brazil? Management. Does that come from, from government or does that come from the private sector? Well, I don't know. I went to Brazil last month and uh, I, I, I was waiting two hours f to talk to a guy in Brazil. And for him, it's normal, this kind of delay. The, the punctuality is not a big strength in Brazil. So ah, I see. So it's, it's hard to do business in Brazil sometimes after you, you, you live in the United States because you have this kind of uh, problems of uh, professionalism that uh, is not helping. Let's go back to agribusiness for, okay. for a bit. Let's go away from, from uh, crops for fuel and let's okay. go to crops for food. Uh, what's the big thing in agriculture there? So we are the farm of the world in terms of we doing a all the main crops are in Brazil nowadays. Mm -hmm. So what food do we get here in the United States from Brazil? 
Good question. Well, I was at Novilius restaurant here in town, and mm -hmm. they have a lot of uh, wonderful meat from Brazil. Brazil is the, f the first. Brazilian beef. Brazilian mm -hmm. beef, yeah. They uh, have a wonderful steakhouse all, all over the world nowadays. And um, Brazilian beef, we have, I think all the products, orange juice is from Brazil. If you drink orange juice in the United States, you drink orange juice from Brazil. And uh, but so, so then it doesn't bother you then that there is a blight on the uh, orange crop in Florida, and it's it's and, good for us. Yeah. And California is <laughs> it's working. It's bad to keep for it you, out. good for us. Yeah, yeah. but uh, we ha we are the main producer of soybeans, uh, sugar cane, and um, all the big crops now nowadays. Mm -hmm. Brazil is a, have a big hole. Uh, in the the world economy now it is because you know I I gotta tell you being the farm of the world is a sounds a lot better to me than being an oil producing country are are some of the same people involved with big farms in Brazil that are also involved in oil no no relation but both economies are not good for jobs I think maybe oil we need to improve the the uh, the economy in other sectors like industries manufacturing. This kind of because in this sector we have we have uh, we have jobs. In the you can uh, manage manage a big farm with just one person. Mm. That's a big problem. The oil is the same thing. is very concentrated. We have to 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 spread the jobs in startups mainly, uh, services, tourism, fashion, all the the big strengths of Brazil. Mm. If we were to come back in five years and ask you how these past five years been, what would you say? Well, I think, unfortunately, it's the same problem of the United States. This gridlock between the right and the wing, like the right and left, is a, is, a, is a big problem. It can paralyze the country. The same f uh, thing you, you see in the United States, you see in Brazil. Mm. That's the biggest problem. Everything is about money or is about politics. Brazil now we have both problems because the, the government is spending more than the, they can take from the, the population in terms of taxes. So it's a big uh, it's a big problem. And the gridlock is the same thing. Huh. They don't work anymore because they st is still fighting against each other. They have to work to compromise and to work together. Well, as the honorary consul, if you guys are able to solve gridlock, can you give us a call? Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for being with us. It's yeah, been Pedro well. Acosta, the honorary consul from the government of Brazil. Take care.